Hello and welcome to the Mutual Fund Show. My name is Neeraj Shah and over the next 20, 21 odd minutes, we'll talk about uh, some key que questions that of course you guys have posed, us, posed to us over the course of the last one week. But uh, a very interesting fund is getting launched and while the general advice is uh, that NFO should be approached with caution, uh, it's, it's a product which deserves a conversation. It's a Tata Nifty India Tourism Index Fund and we don't I believe, I don't think I've seen too many products of this nature. So let's get in Anand Vardarajan, he's Chief Business Officer of Tata AMC, to tell us about what this NFO is all about. Anand, great having you, thanks for joining in. Uh, interesting, for all the best, of course, for uh, the fun, but interesting concept. I haven't, I, to my mind at least, I haven't seen a product of this nature. What is this all about? Thank you, uh, Neeraj, uh, for having me, first of all. Uh, you wouldn't have seen this because this is the first, uh, a tourism index fund. Uh, it's the Tata and Nifty uh, Tourism Index Fund. Uh, I think uh, just to step back a bit uh, and think about, uh, you know, this particular fund. Uh, if you were to think about per capita GDP, uh, you know, at 2500, you know, your roti, kapda, makan, etc. gets met. And any extra income that uh, an average household earns beyond that can go into two things, which could be either expenses uh, which is discretionary in nature or into investments. Uh, when it comes to discretionary expenses, uh, travel really uh, is a mainstay. And uh, that is where we thought that um, uh, a concept like tourism perhaps will, uh, will uh, uh, gain uh, uh, you know, attraction with, with uh, investors. I think the reason is very simple. Uh, you know, we any investments, if you were to do, uh, we'll have to really look at not the not where the puck has been, but where the puck will be uh, in future. Uh, and when you think about, uh, you know, you know, expenditure, I think a very good hack to think about where expenses will go is really uh, to think about where the rich are spending today, the middle class will spend tomorrow. And when you just put that into context, uh, I think tourism then becomes center of plate. Because that's where uh, everyone is is going. Uh, people want to experience. There's a lot of bus that we are seeing across. You have crowded airports, uh, you know, overbooked hotels, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, that we believe is uh, perhaps becoming a sector to really watch out for. Uh, so very very excited, uh, like you mentioned at the start. So tell us what what one what is the kind of investor that should look at this fund and what will the fund effectively do? What kind of companies? Uh, what are the risks to something like this? What are the kind of returns that people should anticipate? See, one thing uh, is for sure that this is a this is a sectoral fund. Uh, I think uh, sectoral stroke thematic fund. So to the extent uh, of whatever uh, you know uh, risk appetite one has one should be mindful that these kind of funds which which are narrow in nature in terms of focusing or zooming in on a, on a particular sector uh, has allied risk of uh, you know less diversification and so on so to that extent one has to really look at it as a high risk um, or an aggressive uh, fund in their portfolio and, uh, you know, that should be really the mainstay as far as one's thinking is concerned before they consider investing in a fund like this. Uh, that having said, uh, what are we looking at? I mean, we are investing across the entire value chain of, of tourism. Uh, when you think about uh, tourism, a simple way to think about is um, get, set, go, stay, uh, cherish. And uh, when you think about get you know you get ready by booking uh, you know the booking and the travel travel companies really come into picture there um, you know then you'll have the luggage companies which will be a part of it you could also have the aviation or airline companies which uh, which could uh, find feature here uh, then you will stay in a hotel where you'll have several hotels that we've uh, uh, we are investing in and there is a bunch of qsr uh, quick service restaurants that we are investing in uh, plus, uh, you know, because there is uh, infrastructure provider in terms of airports and so on, you will have the airport uh, uh, service providers also as a part of the index. So roughly about uh, twenty odd. So this would this would be an index which will comprise uh, at max of thirty stocks. Uh, we're starting with about seventeen odd stocks, not more than twenty percent in a single stock. 
uh, and uh, you know there are different weightages ascribed to different types of sectors so you will have uh, uh, a hotel uh, business which will have say about 32 percent weights to start with um, uh, uh, an airport services uh, company like um, like the ones which we have in the index could find about 10 odd percent you would have uh, uh, airline companies having a weight of getting capped at 20 percent uh, so those are the kind of uh, you know companies that you will find uh, featuring in this particular fund Got it. Uh, ha has this been back tested for what is the kind of returns that something like this could have given in the past or because this is a theme that you believe, as you said, where the puck will be over time, therefore past history may not have as much relevance. I'm asking a question really. See, I yeah. think we've looked at, we've looked at uh, this sector very closely. Uh, mm. Also, if I were to just step back a bit and look at GDP component, uh, if you were to look at services as a component in GDP, IT services really stands out. Uh, at some $187 billion. Uh, you know, tourism is actually $212 billion, a less than known fact. And when you actually uh, look at what all has happened, I think the important question to think is, you know, is it tailwinded or a headwinded sector? Today, when you look at it, I think with the kind of uh, infrastructure development that we've seen in terms of roads, in terms of new airports coming, what was 74 airports, I think in 2014 odd now, about 148 airports, the capacity almost doubling uh, access to you know b and c and d uh, tier cities uh, through air uh, the fact that we are seeing hotel occupancy rates going up i mean all this plus the fact that you know from a government policy perspective the udan scheme uh, which was to you know get to you know smaller locations and air, airport connectivity or the prasad scheme like for instance the whole thing which was done in terms of pilgrimage uh, tourism. Uh, so if you were to think about it segment by segment, there is one segment of pilgrimage tourism, there's one segment of business travel, there's one segment of leisure travel, and there's one segment of uh, medical travel, medical tourism. And uh, when you think about it, all these are kind of uh, seeing very, very strong uh, you know, growth trajectory. And that's what makes us very, very optimistic about what this could hold over the next couple of years. Uh, the fact that not even a single uh, tourism company is uh, still a part of uh, Nifty 50, despite being such a large component to GDP, is also something which uh, one may want to think about in terms of what it could potentially do if if uh, it continues to be tailwinded the way it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but uh, any 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 average returns that investors can anticipate? Uh, I know, I'm not asking for a formal guidance, but. Uh, with the knowledge that it's a it's a sectoral fund and therefore the risk should be proportioned for accordingly what are the kind of returns that can be anticipated see i think uh, sectoral fund uh, typically uh, the nature of the beast is that it will be aggressive uh, and to that extent it is fair to expect that uh, it would it would have uh, much higher volatility and perhaps even return potential could be higher than what you would expect of a typical uh, large cap or say an FT50 kind of a fund. Uh, that having said, uh, you know that's the best I can I can say in terms of what it can it it could potentially do. Uh, but anyone coming with a uh, you know four five seven year kind of a time horizon, I think uh, you know one should uh, one can expect that this should uh, this is a category which could uh, end up doing uh, pretty well for them. Got it. I have, I have one final question. Uh, how would something like this expand in scope? It's a sectoral fund, yes. So would it be restricted to 30 companies or do you reckon with the primary markets the way they are, the scope of options available for a theme like this will expand in the next two, three years? It's a passive fund. So, you know, what we are uh, not wanting to do is try to actively think and see okay. what will underperform. I think uh, like in any passive, you go on the winners and losers. And the fact that uh, you know the winners will obviously shake uh, the losers out of the index, uh, you know, if in a perfect market environment, and uh, that is really the the belief. Uh, uh, I think we've tried to be a little futuristic in terms of what all components could could find feature here, which is where you have uh, QSR, uh, which can potentially uh, you know, given the kind of growth trajectory, it, it looks very interesting from a uh, you know, long-term perspective, which is why you have the uh, IRCTC is my trip, etc., which is the online booking and and whatever is happening in that stack there, 
uh, that again looks very very interesting so you know these are some of the things that we have so there is provision for for us which we've created at a sector level in terms of what uh, could be there we've thought through but uh, again if if there is something which comes up at a later date it's for the index provider to uh, then see if they can uh, you know fit it into the index point well noted great anand great having you today thank you so much and all the best uh, for the nfo thank you thank you well that's tata amc uh, with uh, their view on uh, the new fund offer that is up from their stable. Um, it's an interesting one. It's a passive fund, remember, as uh, Anand Vardarajan spoke about. And it's a fund which is basing itself on tourism. It's the Nifty India Tourism Index Fund. Welcome on the show, Himanshu Kohli, co-founder of Client Associates, for a variety of topics. I will start off, though, with the first one on the NFO that we were talking about. Himanshu, great having you. Thanks for taking the time out. And there is this... Uh, I don't know if you, you, you would have uh, heard of this NFO, right? The Tata Nifty India Tourism Index Fund. Now, usually NFOs are a no-no. On top of that is a thematic one. Uh, they are very hopeful about the kind of prospects that this theme has in store. How would you, or what would you tell to somebody who's looking at you for advice on what to do with an NFO like this? So first of all, Neeraj, uh, I would say compliments to Tata's or coming out with an NFO within two weeks of the index being launched. So that's very, very fast. Uh, I think uh, remarkable on their part to come out with an NFO so fast. Now, you know our views. In fact, uh, we are not too fond of NFOs because normally an investor gets into an NFO that they are getting something at rupees 10 which is not the reality because you're entering into the market at that particular price. So this is something which we don't encourage NFOs to get into a particular fund. Second, this is also a particular index which has certain positives, but there is also a concern on the valuations and the quality of mix of stocks which you will get over here. So positives, if you see, there is a growing middle class travel has increased, tourism is at its all-time high today. Uh, so there are so many things which are having tailwinds around this particular sector per se. But on the other side, if someone is entering today, one needs to see the valuations which are available over here. So today, if you see this sector, uh, like when NSE comes out with a uh, index, they also do the track record of last, uh, since 1st April 2005, which is fairly okay, decent track record. But today the price earning ratio of this index is somewhere about 55 to 60, which is far more expensive than what the market is today. So one is getting into something which is expensive. Yes, there are tailwinds which will make it grow over here, but one needs to see the price earning ratio, the dividend yield is far, far lower than the dividend yield of the broader index. It's 0.17, which is very, very low. So I would say definitely not as a part of the core portfolio. In any case, core portfolio will have more diversified schemes, diversified managers. And if they like, let's say a stock like Interglobe, they will in any case add it over there. But uh, if someone is extremely bullish and still wants to uh, take the advantage of the tailwinds which the sector is offering, even if it's at a expensive valuation today. Maybe put it as a part of this satellite portfolio, which could be a very small portion, and get into it on a systematic basis. So I'm not very fond of NFOs. I'm not very fond of sectoral funds. Uh, I can say sectoral funds uh, can be looked at only on the basis of satellite portfolios. And since in this particular scheme, there is this is the first offering in this particular sector which is available. So maybe one will have to go through the NFO route. Uh, so that is what my comment would be. Got it. But but uh, Himanshu, is is it necessary to pick up into an NFO? No, right? Because you mentioned that. And if yeah. there are other thematic funds available, uh, would this theme rate higher than some of the other thematic options available currently? So as far as uh, we look at the valuations, which is a very, very important parameter, right. I am not very excited about uh, this particular thematic option. Hmm. There are other options, so let's say private sector banks, today are available at a far better B multiples. 
so one can look at those also so so i am not too excited about it but there are certain stocks which are very interesting at a reasonable valuation and if i go through a diversified fund in any case those managers will pick up those stocks true true okay so speaking of uh, thematic funds uh, imanshu would love to understand because you guys also uh, probably run funds as well give us a sense of whether people should invest into uh, a tech fund or an it fund it's thematic in nature it may be making a bit of a comeback if the last few days are taken into account but the but the scene out there not quite clear and the valuations not as high as they used to be but not as low as they were maybe a month ago so it's a bit of a pickle i would love for you to solve it for our viewers so niraj what we construct is a core and a satellite approach typically 75 to 80% is your core portfolio which can be into well diversified across large caps multi caps mid and small caps that is what one can just pick up maybe two two managers who are the best in each of these spaces or maybe then a combination of index funds over there satellite could be constructed in case there is a certain view on a particular theme or a particular sector uh, that's where thematic comes into picture so today i would say for a retail investor who is not having the benefit of an advice of an advisor they can just stick to the core portfolio of diversified funds but someone who has a view and their own perception is about a particular sector very positive we can look at having a satellite portfolio so i would say yes it could be looking promising from future point of view it could be private sector banks which could also look promising from a future point of view there could be there's a lot of infrastructure development which is happening in the country that could also look promising from a future point of view so depending on what your advisor is recommending you you can build a very small portion of satellite in your overall scheme of things otherwise stick to the mainstream diversified oblique index funds which are also broadly diversified mm. okay well uh, viewers i think the answer and the response is firmly clear from himanshu kohli so there are no beating around the bush when it comes to thematic funds in general or the queries that i asked him about uh, imanshu thank you so much for that uh, now i have a couple of queries there are some a lot of people who have written to us i've chosen one or two uh, which i thought were apt for asking you so one query is from a gentleman called rajat mishra rajat is age 56 years rajat's goal is regular income i'll try and make it as simple as i can himanshu uh, rajat is saying that he's got a sip of 50000 rupees in parak parik flexi cap and 25000 in nippon small cap fund he wants to invest 2 and a half crores and retire in the next 2 years with a regular source of income should rajat choose to invest this 2.5 crores as an sip or as a lump sum investment and if you can recommend a few funds for him uh, then that is what his query is right so first of all rajat needs to draw his financial plan that is what i would say he has been doing sips of 50000 and 25000 in the two respective schemes parak parik as well as the small cap fund now idly if you ask me uh, i would at this point in time when market is slightly overvalued and we use a valuation parameter across price to book uh, yield gap and market cap to gdp on our formula today niraj market is overvalued by 12% so first of all if he has to invest 2 and a half crore rupees our model will say he should invest 2.5 crores into 0.88 let's say roughly it works out somewhere about 2.2 crore rupees 2.2 crore rupees if he is aggressive he can invest this 2.2 crores in 6 months time if he is a uh, uh, moderate he can invest in 12 months time uh, on a weekly basis or a monthly basis and if he is conservative he can invest in about 18 months time and there also something what he needs in 3 years to 5 years he can invest more into balanced funds and what he needs beyond 5 years he can start doing the systematic investment plan into equity funds and there also within equity he could look at a combination of some large cap funds some multi cap funds and some mid and small cap funds so today we will recommend him 35% towards large cap 
50% towards multi cap and 15%, 15% towards mid and small cap. And that is how he can start building up his SIP's book. In case equity market falls in between, he can speed up or maybe add some of his last installments immediately or the 12% which he is sitting on cash, he can build it up immediately. In case there is also a change in the valuation parameters of large versus mid and small cap, he can reallocate it at, at that point in time. But today, if he's starting to build up this portfolio in next two years time, I would say, first of all, go systematic. Balanced funds or hybrid funds can be done in about three to six months time. And uh, equity uh, funds, which can be done between six to 18 months time, depending on his profile. Okay. Now, Himanshu, did I hear you say <clears throat> at the start of this conversation? So, thank you so much for this uh, response, of course. Did I hear you say that you might be maybe constructive on banking? Because uh, if so, I just want to know because the second query is around that. Ashish Kar, who is age 30, is asking about what are the, some of the best banking funds that he can invest in. Now, let's assume that Ashish has got moderate risk appetite, moderate. Uh, amount of funds to invest in and a moderate income. Is banking fund a good thematic fund to use, whether core or satellite? And if so, are there funds that you can talk about? So yes, uh, he can look at banking as a part of his satellite portfolio. Okay. Satellite portfolio. So let's say 15 to 20% what is the satellite portfolio, he can look at either a banking index or he can look at something like a Nippon fund over there which is uh, having a reasonably long track record. Uh, something like that, he can look at it. I'm sure there are some PMS houses which are coming up with the banking focused schemes, uh, or there will be some NFOs which will come. I will not recommend NFOs. And over here, since it's a sectoral theme or a thematic fund, I will not recommend a very long SIP over here. I will say do it systematically over the next 12 weeks uh, on a weekly basis. Any of the existing funds? I mean, we're not asking for specific recommendations, uh, Himanshu, but any illustrative examples, if you will, not, need not be an exhaustive list, of course. So, Nippon is a good fund. Okay. Uh, and then uh, you can also go for an index fund in banking side also, because the idea is to just get slightly higher exposure so index fund would be a lower expense ratio fund. And Nippon also has a reasonably good track record. Okay, great. Imanshu, so good talking to you. It's been a while, but thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us and giving us your thoughts. I really appreciate your time. No, thank you, Neeraj. Thank you so much for inviting me over here. Well, the pleasure was ours. Well, that's Imanshu Kohli of Client Associates with his thoughts on the NFO, of course, and some of the thematic conversations that we had. I hope that was useful, certainly useful for me. And with that, it's a wrap on this leg of the Mutual Fund Show.